much going on, but the Warriors do not look now. But things are happening. They have won four straight, six of their last seven. They're at 500 again. They're sitting in the 10th spot. They've beaten Philly twice. Grizzlies, Nets, Pacers, Suns on Saturday. Uh, Lou, you were the first one in our text thread to sort of bring up the fact that, uh, is this happening? Is this the beginning of something for the Warriors? Absolutely. I, I, I've always said it. They hadn't played their best basketball this year, but if there's going to be a team that's at the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the Western Conference that makes a run, it's going to be the Golden State Warriors. They're battle-tested. They're a championship-caliber team. They have what it takes to turn that switch on. And right now we're seeing them play some really good basketball. They're putting themselves in a position to be in that 10 spot right now going into the All-Star break. It looks like they're going to move up more than that if they can continue to play like this. But, you know, I think the, the difference has been Draymond Green. Draymond has found his rhythm and being that anchor for them on defense. Offensively, he's giving them looks. They're back to that, the dribble handoffs, playing fast, making sure Steph get a bunch of, bunch of um, possessions where he can come off of screens and, and shoot threes. And, and Jonathan Kaminga. Jonathan Kaminga is giving them a lot of energy as well. And so this is going to be a team that's going to be dangerous coming out of the All-Star break. They're starting to put together a good run. Just like the Chiefs. Dang it, Shavs. Tell me about your takeaway from the Warriors right now. Draymond Green, I think that's my <laughs> biggest takeaway. They're seven and four since he got back in the lineup in mid-January. They're sixth in defensive rating during that time span. Sixth in offensive rating during that time span. They've been really the bottom half of the league throughout the season in those categories. But since Draymond Green's been back, you've seen him rejuvenated. And I think you, you spend, if you're Draymond Green, about a month away from basketball. You worry about your conditioning. You work about you worry about your game shape. But he came in. And he's looked good. He's played heavy minutes on some nights. And he's gone back to that facilitator role. He's been really playing point guard at different points. He's, he's, the, he's the de facto point guard, the, 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 maestro, the maestro of this team, getting Stephen Curry going, getting Jonathan Kaminga going. Those two guys have essentially become the one-two punch of this Warriors team. Jonathan Kaminga uh, playing that supporting role as far as that number two option for Steph Curry. Because a lot of this season, Andrew Wiggins has been up and down. Clay Thompson, we've talked about his struggles at different points. Uh, he's, had a, he, he's had a big game recently, but then there were also points Steve Kerr has not been afraid of benching him down the stretch of a game. And so uh, now that that aspect, they're, they're working through, they're trying to figure out his role. To me, Draymond Green being back, unlocking Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga, those two guys had some horrible st stats together. The number said you can't play them, but Draymond Green has essentially unlocked that. <laughs> Well, we'll get to some more of the Draymond because he's he's back in a couple different ways. Um, but the ceiling, Lou, realistically for this Warriors team, are, are we talking all the way? Are we talking Western Conference Finals? Like, how are you seeing this playing out? Uh, listen, they got a lot of they got a lot of really good basketball to play to put themselves in a position for us to be talking about that. You know, right now they're sitting at that ten spot. They're a game out from the Lakers, getting to nine. Dallas Mavericks have created some, some separation um, two and a, with two and a half games up on the Lakers in that eight spot. So they got a lot of ground to cover. So for, for them to be in that position, they're going to have to play some really good basketball. But if you ask me, if I'm a Minnesota, I'm the L.A. Clippers, and I'm playing great basketball all season, and I get rewarded with a Dallas Mavericks or a Los <laughs> Angeles Lakers or a Golden State Warriors to deal with in the first round, I don't think that's fair. I don't think, I don't think that's right. But that... that shows the strength and numbers that the Western Conference have and the teams that, that they have over there and what they're capable of. But the Warriors ceiling, I think they sneak into this playoff position. They make it really difficult for somebody to advance. Yeah, never count them out. All right, so let's go back to Saturday. Draymond and Yusuf Nurkic with a, like a reunion of sorts, if you will. In the third quarter, you got Nurk taunting Draymond. You got Draymond responding after the game. Both of them talked about it. Here they are. It's sad. He didn't learn anything, man. Wow, it's, uh, it's just a matter of time. He's going to knock somebody else again. So take everything back what I said. You, know, you don't deserve a chance. He tried to get in my head, and it didn't work. If he want me to walk around quiet like him, I'm never going to do that. Quiet guys don't win. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Uh, Lou, <laughs> what do you think? I, kinda, I mean, I kind of love it. It felt like a very real response, but what did you think? Um, I, I think everything is deserved with these two and, and the history that they've shared in this season. You know, 
Nurt got hit in the face. I'm probably not going to like a guy that's ever hit me in the face. And like Draymond said, he's going to be who he is um, unapolog unapologetically, and he's going to continue to move forward like that. Um, and so these are probably two guys that are just not going to like each other. And every time they compete against each other, you're going to see some chirping. You're going to see a little chippiness, and, and that's what it's just going to be. You know, this is a personal thing at this point. So I feel both guys, they've said their piece. They're both standing on business, and yeah. you know that's what we that's what we, that's what we're gonna see coming from those two guys. Oh, I'm excited about it. It makes me want them to play each other over and over and over again. Because when you say that guy doesn't learn anything and didn't deserve a second chance, I'm like, uh oh, this might go on for a while. Michelle, right. you know you know what's right. kind yeah. of ironic about that huh. is that when Draymond Green, when that incident happened, and you know the league does their investigation, which Lou knows about. You talk to the players involved, you talk to people involved, the referees, et cetera. When they talked to Yusuf Nurkic, he told them he didn't believe Draymond Green should have been suspended. That's what I was told in the moment. And again, he did competition and what happened the other night, Yusuf Nurkic probably doesn't feel that way anymore. He probably believes, you know what? I, I think Draymond Green should have been suspended. So it was, but it was interesting in the moment when it first happened, uh, you know, whatever, whatever it was, a couple of months ago, uh, Yusuf Nurkic was actually on the side. Draymond Green shouldn't have been suspended. I don't know how yeah, many people were in that lane, but he was. He, he was trying to be cool. Like, I don't want to be the guy that says he's got to be punished, and now here we are. By the way, the, the big sentiment that he had was he's going to do it again. So I guess now we wait, and uh, we see if, in fact, that's what's going to happen. But, Lou, I want to talk about Jonathan Kaminga. It feels like it wasn't that long ago where he was sort of upset with his role and what was he supposed to be doing on this team? And and he has been amazing since then. He's averaging just under 24 points a game, 59% shooting. He's got the rebounds going as well. Um, do you think, or let me ask you this, because he's obviously somebody they can build around, but what was it that sort of unlocked whatever it is Kaminga's doing now? I think he just got an opportunity to play. You know, they were, they were going through a lot of different things, trying out different rotations and, and different game plans and, he was one of those guys that benefited from that. He, he was one of the guys that benefited from the chaos that they were having early in the season. You know, he put his head down and just continued to work, put himself in a position to be successful, and you're starting to see the fruits of the labor of that. And, he, you know, he's becoming the player that they always thought he would be. He was going to be the young up-and-coming guy that was going to give them a different look, that was going to be able to add on to, you know, these, these legendary careers of Draymond, Clay, and, and Steph. I mean, he's playing at a, he's playing at a high level now. Do I think he's a guy to build around? As long as you got number thirty in the locker room, everything is going to be built <laughs> around him. I don't see anything different happening in a foreseeable future, um, as far as them building around Jonathan Kaminga. But he's definitely one of the great pieces that's come out of all of this, and I'm glad it's starting to happen. 